Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this is just a really short follow-on to the previous video here uh, that I did on, uh, you know, uh, calibrating the lasers here in the PS1. Um, in that previous video, I did have about three or four people actually, I think, that asked me the question, why not use a digital multimeter? You know, because obviously it's a bit more accessible to people. Uh, lots of people have got digital multimeters, you know, so. Um, I thought, well, let's just revisit this, and I did point out my um, the reasons behind me using the scope, and the reason why it's not that easy to do with a digital multimeter, because <coughs> different, um, you know, your probes um, are going to have different impedance. They're going to put a different impedance and things on the trace when you're measuring it. So I've just powered it on. There's no disc. Well, there is a disc in. It's not spinning or anything. The lid, the lid switch is, as you can see, just down there. It's still, uh, you know, not pressed. And I'll just point you down at the meter. So it's going to be a bit difficult for me to do this whilst. Uh, I'm doing it at the same time show you the, the readings and things but you'll see at idle and it's not doing anything 1.242 on that RF test pad there um, so, and bear in mind you know the model number I think this is a 5502 uh, I think it is um, if I now push the switch down it's starting to spin the disc now you'll see it goes up to about two point, just over 2.2 .2 volts um, and we'll just let it load the disc Right, it's popped up with the PlayStation logo. So I'll just give it a minute. I managed to cut some of this out and I'll just wait for it to load the title screen. But you can see the voltage there, it's around the 2.2 volts mark. Um, and this is obviously you know, on DC measurement here on the meter. Um, and we'll wait for it to get to an audio track because that's what I'm interested in. But as you saw on the scope previously, and I will double check it a minute in a minute with my uh, that portable HPS 10 I've got, um, it was around 900 millivolts mark. Um, Perhaps just a bit more, might be like 950, something like that, 930. Um, and that's the reason is that when you want to adjust one of these, you're aiming for specific voltage, you know, like that 900 uh, or somewhere around 1.1, 1, 1 volt, something like that, depending on whether you're using burnt discs or not. But 900 millivolts is the, 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 the way you should aim for to start with, certainly for pressed media. Um, and it, as you can see, using digital multimeter here, you've not got the same representation coming back. Uh, you know, it's not giving you the same voltage, despite the fact on scope you can see um, it's about 900 millivolts. That's on the audio track now. You can see 2.128 to 2.131 roughly. So, you know, that's a good ballpark uh, to aim for. I will test it with a different multimeter in a minute just to see if it's giving me exactly the same sort of readings there. Um, but the interesting thing is the probes are not interfering with the um, the read like the scope did when I had it on times one. So, you know, that's a benefit of using digital multimeter. But as, as I pointed out in the, um, the the comments there in that previous video, you can use a multimeter, but you need to compare like for like, as I'm doing here, I'm you know measuring it at the DC voltage in a working system where I know it's set to approximately 900 millivolts. And then I, would, I could go away to another system of the same model with the same sort of laser assembly and stuff and make that same adjustment just based off the DC voltage here using the multimeter. I didn't really show very much of the board up close last time, I thought I'd just show you, you've got your test points down there, you can see clearly where I've had the uh, probe on that test point there. Yeah, SMD, electrolytics again, so yeah, inspect around those, just make sure they're not, not leaking. For the most part they're pretty good on these Sony boards actually, uh, I've never had to replace one on a PS1 uh, yet. Uh, yeah, sadly this area here, I'll fold this back, you can see um, it's shielded, you know, I'd have to remove that cam where the main uh, ASICs and things are underneath, but yeah, some more electrolytics there. Uh, power supply connects down there. That's where the controller uh, ribbon connects. More SMD electrolytics. Yeah, nothing very exciting. Not sure what that is there. Look, transistor or a regulator or something. So just test now with Ali's old um, scope here. You can see uh, 914 millivolts there. Um, it's having a problem triggering. Um, and as at the moment you can see the mark at the bottom is just a little bit low so it's probably it would represent a lower voltage actually if I move that marker up but as it goes in and out of loading as you'll see it does get nearer to um, the bottom can you see there that's touching the bottom it's touching the top so yeah we're not far off the 900 millivolts I was going for um, and as you saw previously the DC voltage that my multimeter was reporting back that's what you'll see when you're aiming for around 900 millivolts on this particular model PlayStation. So the other thing worth mentioning over the previous video as well, it's worth getting a bit of oil or grease into the uh, the gear system here, you know, that worm 
bar there and on the gear um, and also get a little bit of lubrication into where these the, 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 the you know the, the metal parts or the aluminium or whatever they are slide up and down the plastic there you can see you can see it's got a bit of oil on there on both sides of it uh, just to make sure they're lubricated because someone did comment in the previous video saying these aren't lubricated and he's actually correct you know these cheap replacements uh, they're a bit crap in that sense so that's all done now the other problem you can get is these spindles come off really easy on these actually but once you push them down they're not too bad it's not coming off with a disc or anything so but that is worth pointing out and something else i didn't point out in the previous video is when you remove an old laser assembly uh keep keep the old one because it's useful you know for your motors your gear uh, even some of the other parts like the, mo the main motor here you know you can always swap those out um if you get a fault um on a difference you know one of the pickups of a different system or something you know that motor is always useful like say the other motor as well and just in case, because someone's bound to ask, um, I've set this to AC now, and I'll show you if I measure the test pad again. So it's loading. Give it a minute, I'll tell you when it stabilises. Well, you'll hear it actually when it's uh, on the menu. But you can see it jumps all over the place, so you do need to measure it on DC. Yeah, so that point is 008. It's, uh, you know, it's hardly showing anything at all, so... Um, yeah, you do really need to measure this on a DC set if you want anything meaningful to come back there. But yeah, an audio track 2.13, roughly. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.